Lilo Pimienta de la Casa. Ra, ra, oh, ra, ra, yes. Ra. <laughs> Lilo, one thing is that um, the first time I hear you, I heard you, or I heard of you, was in 2018, when I saw your La Capacidad, the video. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I remember I was listening and seeing the video and then you stopped the video because you start with a conversation mm -hmm. and uh, with friends. And I, I remember I was at the conversation, it was at, about a situation of abuse and how your mother like linked to you and <laughs> help you. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, this woman is sharing something very personal. And uh, I, of course, I heard the entire disc and I, I loved it. And I, now that I have this second disc uh, or third disc that you have, I, I, I see that it's again, it's very personal as well, but with probably with another, another, um, another especie, no? So sí. it resonates a lot of people, especially probably Colombians and migrants. Can you sí. tell us about a little bit about some of the themes of this album. Yeah, Miss Columbia is a, is more a little bit more mature and it has a bit is a is a, a larger focus on this uh, the feeling of you know having a love hate relationship with our country with our nation you know and I feel like even if like first generation or second generation or you were born in the country or you you know had to move somewhere else like we I could, we all can agree that you know there's so many things that we we'll love about where we are but we also despise where we are and that's what I did with 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 this with this album I really wanted to ask about the first and last songs on the album Para Tanto okay. Sol and Luna because it, it's like a process it sounds like a process of acceptance maybe of Colombia and like a process maybe that you went to before you began writing the album or Could you tell me if, tell me more about those two songs and how they're kind of bookends? <laughs> <laughs> so, para transcribir, sol y luna, so sol means sun and luna means moon. And para transcribir, it, it translates to, to transcribe. So, this is, this is specifically speaking to when When you leave your home country, you know, for a long time, or even if, you're, if you've been gone for a year, you go back home, right? You go to where you were born. And it seems like we need to adapt or we need to almost have a script as of the memory of the person that your family um, thinks that you still are, if, if you know what I mean. Like, Like when I'm home, you know, like my grandmother still sees me as a, as a child, right? Like she, she cannot fathom or she cannot connect that I am a grown up with children on my own, you know? And like still like when she speaks to me, you know, she's still like, well, you better behave, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, you know, but it also applies to like close family or, you know, other relatives and also, you know, friends and people that you grew up with, like they expect you to be the same person, you know? And the saddest part of this is, you know, politically, right? When people that you grew up, that ha you had the same uh, way, the, the, same, the same way that they, you, you were raised the same way, but then it, it, there's this like disjointment. There's this, this, so I feel like I always have to like carry a script with me that I have to transcribe and translate so that I can fit this memory that people that I, that, that, that stayed behind have of me so that I don't disapp disappoint them. So in the evolution of the album, it's kind of like, you know, by the time that we get to Tequeria, I'm like, I cannot continue to live my life, you know, thinking about making other people happy, you know, but that's what Sol is about. It's like, I need to, to transcribe this so that I can maybe be happy. And then Luna, it's like, you know what? I still haven't figured it out, but I'm just gonna go to sleep and tomorrow it will be another day, you know? Beautiful. Um, so part of the album is recorded in Colombia and in mm -hmm. Palenque. Mm -hmm. um, and we hear from Rafael Cassiani Cassiani, 
the leader mm-hmm. of Sexteto Tawala, which is obviously hugely important in Palenque. Um, so why was it important to you to have his voice on the album and to record there? Well, the album, you know, when we get to that, like, half mark, you, I, I we strip away and it's not as pop or it's not an electronic. So when we get to Quiero Que Me Salves, when we get to Pelo Cucu, when we get to Cassiani talking, it's like, I, I'm basically, I'm centering blackness. I'm centering Afro-Colombian music. I'm centering, I'm putting, you know, the, the African roots of Colombians, you know, in this, in, in this time being in Palenque, I'm putting the drums in, on a pedestal right at the center of the album so that people can understand and, and, and yeah, just like join the dots, you know, because I feel like often, you know, we, we use these rhythms to our advantage, but we don't give back to the communities that created them. And when songs have Afro-Colombian rhythms or there's like a dembo or like a, like a, a rhythm that is very strictly black, you know, you, th- those, the, the rhythms are used as decoration. So I didn't want to be like a, like a musical backpacker and like takes pictures with the blacks and builds a school and, mm-hmm. and then goes home, check out these recordings that I did. I am going to reissue it and sell every copy for 300 euro. That's not what I do, right? It's important to have Cassiani tell his story, you know, because he's not, he's not on the wall. He's not a picture on the wall. He's not in National Geographic, you know, like he's not <laughs> like, he's not like a, you know, he's not a picture, right? Like he's a real human, you know, that has given hundreds of beautiful songs to the country, you know? It was very important to me to give back to Cassiani and Sexeto the same way or as much as I could, because I don't think I could ever repay them for the inspiration that they've given me and how they formed me, you know, as a singer, as a performer. So we also see um, Kumbe, the dance group, who you yeah. talk about with a bit. Um, yeah. And the choreography in Eso Que Tu Haces is super cool. Can you tell us a bit about how you design this dance together and how you use traditional dance and then something a bit more sort of off kilter. Yes. So Kumbe are a group that are still active now and is the... I actually was the singer of this group when I still lived in Colombia. That's why, you know, it was only natural that uh, we were together. Uh, we were together on this occasion, you know. We were going to Palenque and I was like, okay, like, let me draw up this storyboard so that everyone knows and I'm going to send it to Matilde so that she knows what we're going to do because, of course, every rhythm has a choreography. Yeah, we all have, the, and I know, Buyerengue is this rhythm, uh, Sexteto is this rhythm, uh, Champeta is this rhythm. And I knew I wanted to start with Buyerengue, right? Because that's when you have this, this, the clapping when they come in. And, I, and all I did was I directed them so that they would do like the lines because I, I knew we were going to have drone shots and stuff. So I, I directed that. But the choreography itself, it's, it's traditional. But because I knew it, I grew up with it, and I was in the group for like two years, I knew exactly what was going to fit, you know, and it was so fun, you know, like we were reminiscing so much, like we had such a good time shooting the video, and they're all, uh, and they were all like, uh, you know, like they're so proud, right, because like I was like this, like, you know, like I was this like little girl, like singing to the top of my lungs, and then, <laughs> And then I come back and I'm like, well, you're going to be in the music video now. And they're like, yes, girl. Wait, are we getting paid? I'm like, you're getting paid. Yes, girl. <laughs> and I knew that we were going to start, you know, with a traditional dance. And then we were going to start everyone in our civilian clothes just dancing, you know, champeta. And champeta is actually fast. Like, it's such a fast rhythm. Like, and I was like, okay, we have to shoot this part in slow-mo so that it goes with the beat of the song it was very important that they had the same amount of screen time as me i hate those videos when there's like anything that's traditional but then like the artist is like the artist that gets most screen time and then you know the other dancers or whatever they're just like whatever like the decoration 
So for me, it was like, no, 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 no. And then at the end, we were all dancing together and it was like a, a beautiful, triumphant, you know, and uh, and to top it, you know, all the drone shots in both Eso Que Tu Haces and Nada were by my cousin. This you see on this <laughs> cover? Lilo Pimienta, Lilo Pimienta, okay. Um, the outfit where I'm with like the bags, that one is like mi like different things from my wardrobe because we couldn't have the thing that I designed ready on time for the video. But the yellow jacket and the striped dress, it's from uh, a Brazilian designer called Jao Paulo Pugliese. So he's amazing. So you, it's all in the video. So you can, we credit everybody so you can see that in the video. You mentioned Nada um, mm -hmm. with Lisa and Wet. Uh, yeah, another amazing video. Can you tell us a bit more about that collaboration um, and a bit more about the song which touches on motherhood, which of course we've seen kind of throughout your career, but it's really an important part of that song. All those things about being a woman that has to like breastfeed, a woman that has to take care of a precious little bundle of useless meat, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's so hard and I had forgotten, you know? I have my baby and I'm singing and you know, rocking her back and forth and then ooh, 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 ooh. and then I wrote that and I and I feel like it was my daughter's gift to me. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about the production behind No Pude? When I went to Chile the first time I contacted my most favorite uh, producer his name is Matt Smith but his artist name is Prince Nifty and I've always admired his work. And um, I, I called them up and I told them, you know, you wanna come to Chile? And we started working on the engineering behind those voices and, and he worked on it and he basically turned this like post-apocalyptic um, telenovela drama that I started and he turned it into some kind of industrial reggaeton. And then we invited um, what I call the Road to Avonlea Choir but they're these four amazing, fantastic singers. And then we did the, ah, 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 ah. So that was really fun to just like, because I knew I needed, I love like terror. I love, I love uh, scary movies. So it's just like, no, this is like my scary movie, you know? So, and already Nifty put it in such a fantastic, sophisticated, like bombastic beat that he added and all the things that he added to 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 what I started that it that we knew that we needed to like close it you know with his voices and then just to add the final chef's kiss we brought in Tara uh, who did all the the trumpets in the album and it was just fantastic you know we wanted to know in what other in what other aspects of your music we also see that that heritage I was raised by a very strong woman, you know, my family is like a matriarchy, you know. I went to a school called the Lyndon B. Johnson School where it was a sin to be caught speaking Spanish and where I was like a total weird kid because they knew I was from La Guajira and my mom would come to my school whenever she had to wearing like traditional garment and people were just like, you're like an Indian? You're like a black Indian? Like, what are you? I'm a dark kid compared to all the other kids with like the wide blue eyes, you know, named Stephanie and Natalie. And, you know, it's like very different. Okay. I'm not an activist. I'm, this is just my life. You know, it's just like I have family members that are like super bougie, you know, and I have family members that live in the desert. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm just pointing out facts, you know. Music to me is an excuse to look fabulous. People think that musicians or artists are like these geniuses, you know, and it's just like, sometimes it's not that deep. And that's why, you know, when things get really real in the world, people want answers from these big mega stars, you know. I am an artist and I know that what I do is very important. I know that the work that I do is in the realm of healing, you know. But it's also, I, I, if I take myself seriously, that's gonna be the end of me. So I'm going to read this one out to you from Anahi. Your album has healed so much of this for me. And I wanted to ask, what else can we do to heal? What do you do? Okay, so first of the first step is to not 
feel guilty for who you are. All that we can really do is acknowledge, you know, the power and the privilege that we have. Don't feel bad for who you are, you know, and use your, your power for, for, for the good of everybody and, and blessings are going to come your way. There are um, a couple of people here that belongs to, well, to Latinos, John Latinos, second generation of Latinos, Afro-Latins. I don't know if you would like to say anything regarding uh, either this time or uh, as, as your experience as a woman in this industry that is complicated, uh, also as migrants speaking in a different language. Know that you are valid. Know that your economy is valid. Know that your difference and being from a different culture adds to this new culture that you're in. There's one more thing everyone wants to know and it's about yes. collaborating on the new Bombay Stereo album. That is absolutely true. It is, if you like Miss Columbia, this was just a little, this was just the tip of the day, the tip of the, it's like, it's gonna be cr like just, yeah, it's being mixed right now. So many beautiful songs. Uh, the collaboration is on point. I was one of the producers, like one of the main producers. Okay. Okay. Um, just watch out because it's coming. I'm not, I can't tell you the name or anything else, but it's going to be wonderful, wonderful record. Yeah. Oh, best news to end on, I think. Yes. Leo, thank you, thank you. Muchísimas gracias por, por estar aquí con nosotras. Eh, creo que muchísima gente, hay un montón de palmitas eh, aplaudiendo. Eh, thank you very much for this. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything. No, no? I'm just uh, <laughs> Great. Thank you for having me, mi gente. Don't take no shit from nobody. <laughs> I hope we can see you uh, this year or next year in the festival. <laughs> hey! Gracias, Lido. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for coming and participating in this in this uh, in the festival online.